Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a 44-year-old female. She had complaints of chest numbness and tingling, and the physician thought she may have multiple sclerosis and did an MRI to rule out demyelination. And this is a view we start with. It's called a sagittal T2 view. So T2 has white fluid. So the fluid is white. You can see it over the top of the brain here. You can see it around the central brain, around the base of the brain. If we look off on the left-hand side, we see the patient's profile. Here's the chin. You can see the tongue here. And if we roll to the left side, we see the left eye. And right in the middle of the brain, we see this dark band. This is the corpus callosum. Here's the front, and here's the back. And the corpus callosum is like a big wiring harness that joins the left cerebral hemisphere to the right cerebral hemisphere. So multiple sclerosis likes the corpus callosum. It may be close to it or touch it. And some of the lesions, if they're... Um, perpendicular coming off the side can be really characteristic for it. Um, it also likes the brain stem down here and the cerebellar hemispheres centrally. And so we look in these areas for MS. So on this patient we're going to go to another view that's a little bit more sensitive for white matter lesions. This one does show um, gray matter is bright and the white matter is more dark. But we have another sequence here that is really sensitive. This is called a flare sequence. And on the flare sequence, again, you can see the gray matter, like a ribbon around the outside. You can see the white matter. It's very uniform, dark, and low signal. But if there's a white matter lesion on these, it really stands out as bright. So this is an arrow pointing to a white matter lesion here on the left side. It's in the back left. Here's the front, and here's the left, and here's the front right, just to get oriented. Now if we go down to the bottom, things look very good down below here. Here's the... Um, brain stem, cerebellum, and if you're going up there may be a tiny lesion here on the left hand side, very very subtle. And if we keep on going up here we're going to look really carefully at the um, perivent uh, periventricular white matter or the pericolossal white matter. The, again the corpus callosum is that band that joins the right and left cerebral hemispheres. This is it in front. And on the front right side there's a, an arrow pointing to a lesion. So this is right Next to the right corpus callosum towards the front is sort of a characteristic location for MS. So we can start to get a, a confidence that this may be related to MS. There's another little subtle area here around the left side, really subtle, but it looks like it may be real. And if we follow it up, yep, there it is. So this is coming off the posterior corpus callosum there or near the ventricle. So this is uh, another characteristic lesion. Here's one on the left. Another one over here. These are not clearly touching the corpus callosum there. So these are very nonspecific. If the patient only had these, we would uh, wonder if they have migraine headaches or chronic small vessel disease or some other findings. But when we see lesions like this that are touching the corpus callosum, and this one over here that go to the edge of it, these can be uh, give you a high degree of confidence that you are dealing with multiple sclerosis. If we go to the very, very top, there's one more little lesion I want to show you right there. So this is one of those other non-specific lesions. Again, if they only had this one, you'd say, oh, maybe they have migraines or maybe an old trauma can cause this lesion. But again, when you see these central ones and they have the right clinical symptoms, you uh, can be pretty confident. And that's it. Thank you very much.